Hi everyone, so today I'm making homemade tofu using Mary Tess Kitchen's recipe. So her recipe calls for just only three ingredients, soy milk, lemon, and half cup of water. So it's important for the soy milk to be homemade and not the one that we can buy in grocery stores. So I already pre-made this and if you want to know how to make soy milk, I can link her recipe below or if you've seen my how to make coconut milk and oat milk video is pretty much the same process just using soybeans so yeah and let's get started so the first step is to simmer some soy milk this is about four to five cups of soy milk and we need to get it to a temperature of 160 degrees So while we let it heat up, we have to keep stirring it so that it won't stick at the bottom because soy milk tends to do that. So just keep stirring until it reaches the temperature of 160 degrees and if you don't have a thermometer, what we can also do is to just let it boil and then turn it off and let it rest for like 3 minutes according to the recipe. So while waiting for the soy milk to heat up, we can make our coagulant, I think that's how you say it. So basically it's the half cup of water, cold or room temperature, and a tablespoon and a half of lemon juice. So I already have um, fresh squeezed lemon juice over here. I'm just gonna measure a tablespoon and about a half and just stir it. So this coagulant or lemon juice mixture is what's going to make the soy milk curdle and we're going to use it after we heat up the soy milk. So the soy milk has started simmering. I can see the steam coming off it. So I'm going to take the temperature and see if it's around 160. And I'm using this candy thermometer to determine it. Oh, but it's fogging up. Okay, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. So yeah, I think it's about 160. I don't know if you can see it because it's a little bit foggy and it's in the pot. But yeah, it's 160 Fahrenheit. So now that we've turned it off and took it off from the heat, it's now, it's now time to mix in the lemon juice or the coagulant. So at first we just need to put pour half of it and keep stirring while we do so. So I can see the curd starting to form already. I'm just going to keep stirring it. And now I'm going to put the rest of the lemon juice and stir it. So yeah, so I'm just going to keep stirring until more curds form. If you can see it, like there are curds forming very quickly. I'm just gonna keep stirring a little bit more. Now that I can see there's sufficient curdling, or at least the beginning of it, I'm gonna cover a pot with a lid for about 10 to 15 minutes until it curdles. A bit more so I'm just gonna set the timer for let's say 10 minutes first and then we'll check in after that all right see you after 10 minutes so to help me strain the curds I'm using a big bowl and putting this colander strainer on top of it and then lining that strainer with cheesecloth so I'm also using the cheesecloth to wrap the tofu, the tofu with later on. So I'm, I'm using a very generous amount of cheesecloth over the strainer. Yeah. And you can be creative about this, use whatever you have at home. 
to make this type of straining contraption you can go to the sink to be able to if you need to so it's been 10 minutes the timer just went off and let's see how our soy milk is doing so yeah it has curled with some more and it looks like pretty much how it's supposed to look like the water has to be clear not milky and the soy milk curdling a lot but I'm gonna wait another five more minutes let it curl a bit more since this have to cool down anyways before I strain it so let's add five more minutes on the timer and see you in five minutes so timer just went off and let's look at it yeah so I think this is ready to be strained so it's like well cur curled but the water is clear so that's what we want okay so let's go strain so let's go ahead and strain this this might get a little bit messy so I'm using this tiny strainer too as well to help me with the water just put it on there Just do this until everything is strained. So if you can just let me show you for a second. So like see the water is getting strained in the bowl while I do this and we can also move the cheese cloth a bit to help a bit more with the drainage because yeah. we want as much water as we can out of this bean curd the soy bean curd aka tofu So this recipe, I think, makes about 2.5 ounces of tofu, and it's a really firm tofu, at least from what I saw from Mary Test Kitchen's um, YouTube video. So I'm excited to see how big this one gets as well. Oops, the strainer fell in the pot, but hold on. This is a bit more important than rescuing that strainer. All right. Uh, okay. So just a little bit more. I think I'm just gonna see if I could just pour it, pour the rest of it into the strainer slash cheesecloth contraption. Just very carefully so that it won't splash. All right. Okay. So let me zoom in a little bit closer. All right. Uh, okay, here we go. So all of the curds are now in this cheesecloth, but we still need to strain it a little bit more because I can see there's still a lot of water in it. So I'm just going to move the cheesecloth around so that the water leaves this, the curds. And what, uh, what I can do as well is to do this and strain out the water from the curds just do it very carefully because it is still a bit hot and you can see all 
all the water. That soy head. I wonder if it could use that water for something. I don't know. Maybe just to water my plants. I don't know. Yeah, that's good to find ways on how to recycle water as well. Because I feel like once I started moving to becoming more sustainable, I've also noticed that in order to like reuse a lot of stuff or make my homemade stuff, I tend to use a lot of water and I feel like that's kind of like counterintuitive. So I'm also starting to becoming more mindful of how much I use the water when I do this sustainable videos or anything sustainable really in my day-to-day -day life, whether it's a DIY home cleaning product or recipe or anything. So let's see how it looks like now. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, this is starting to look a little bit more like tofu. So what we're gonna do is tie up the cheesecloth for a, a little bit, just so the curds don't escape. And then try to shape it into a rectangle so that it would mimic the shape of store-bought tofu. So yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna put something heavy on top of this so that the water would strain a little bit more. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I emptied the water from this bowl that was drained from the tofu and put it in this container. And for now, this is what I'm gonna use as sweet over the tofu so that more water comes out and it gets drained. So, okay. So I'm gonna leave for the gym and check back on it when I come back. I suspect it's gonna take quite a while for all the tofu, for all the water from the tofu to be pressed out and for the tofu to be ready. So I'll see you when I come back from the gym. Bye. Okay, so a few hours later, it took me a lot longer to come back from the gym. I had to run some errands afterwards. So I'm only getting back to it now. So this has been pressed under that container for about four hours, I think. So that's why like this shame formed kind of like from being pressed down by the bottom of the container. And it looks like it has a lot of the water has been squeezed out or absorbed by the cheesecloth. And has become a lot thinner than I expected it to be but let's see how it goes I also have to move back to my room to continue filming because it gets too dark in the kitchen plus people are home and it's noisy so you know problems of being a youtuber so now let's open it and see how this looks like So it is tofu, it did become tofu, it's just a lot thinner than I thought it would be. But I guess I should have used more soy milk and doubled up the recipe to do that. But yeah, this is the finished tofu. Not as smooth as the one you'll find from the stores, but this is definitely tofu. It has like kind of molded together. and. For it to become a lot more firmer, I am putting it in cold water and it's going to stay there until I use it. So I might use this tomorrow and I will update you on how it cooks and what it tastes like then. So here's the tofu a day later. I took it out of the cold water and just drained it again before I go ahead and fry it. So. I'm not doing anything special with it. I'm just gonna fry it up since I'm eating it with my conchi. And I just have some cilantro here to garnish it later on after I fry it up. Since the tofu is thin, I don't feel the need to cut it up. I'm just gonna fry it up as is. Let's put it in the pan. 
So there's like some tofu crumbs that I also strained. I just put it in the frying pan to check if the oil is hot. So I'm just gonna put it gently on the frying pan. There it goes. I'm gonna fry it um, maybe four minutes on each side just until it gets crispy. Here's the tofu fried up. It turned out really crispy, like crispier than a store-bought tofu in my opinion. Maybe because it's thin, but look at that. It's very crispy. So this would actually also make a very good um, burger patty substitute. Just look at that. So yeah, so what I'm going to do is going to chop it up and put some cilantro in it and some everything bagel, but the bagel sesame seasoning. So here's the tofu all fried up. Look at it, it's so crispy. In my opinion, crispier than what I get from store-bought tofus. And this would make a really good um, vegan burger pot patty. So I'm just gonna cut it up now and season it with cilantro and put some everything but the bagel sesame seasoning from Trader Joe's and I'm gonna eat it with my conchi. This is what it looks like cut up. I'm just gonna put some cilantro in it. It looks really good and actually smells really good too. I don't know if it's the oil that I use, but I just use regular oil. But it smells good too. And some everything but the bagel seasoning. So here it is. This is what I'm having for breakfast. Conchi with fried tofu, my homemade tofu, and egg. Well, you can tell I'm Asian because I'm having this for breakfast. <laughs>